In this video, you'll see how Bohr diagrams, or Bohr models, can be used to show how ionic compounds are formed from elements. If you look on this periodic table and locate element number 4, beryllium, you'll see that the charge of the most common ion formed by an element is written on the top right of its box. Notice that metals form positive ions, while nonmetals form negative ions. Ionic compounds form when a metal and a nonmetal combine chemically. Let's do a couple of examples. Here is the Bohr model for a magnesium atom. The valence shell is shown as a large yellow circle. And you can see that a magnesium atom has two valence electrons, shown by the two small blue circles. Remember that elements with one to three valence electrons tend to lose their valence electrons and form ions with noble gas electron arrangements. So a magnesium atom will readily lose its two valence electrons. Now let's consider a fluorine atom. Its valence shell is shown as an orange circle and you can see that it has seven valence electrons which are shown as small pink circles. Recall that atoms with five to seven valence electrons tend to gain electrons to fill up their valence shells and achieve stable noble gas electron arrangements. Fluorine could do this by gaining one electron. Now we'll bring magnesium atom and two fluorine atoms close together, like this. Magnesium's two valence electrons will move to the fluorine atoms. like this. Magnesium's two valence electrons have now been transferred to the valence shells of the two fluorine atoms. Now we look at what is left of the magnesium. It can't be called an atom anymore. What used to be its valence orbital is now empty, so we can remove it from our model. It has 12 protons, which supply a positive 12 charge. And counting the yellow circles, you can see that it has 10 electrons which supply a negative 10 charge. So the net charge is positive 12 and negative 10, or 12 minus 10, which equals positive 2. Since it has a net charge, it is not called an atom anymore. Instead, it's now called an ion. When drawing Bohr models for ions, we put square brackets around the ions, like this, and write the net charge on the top right of the brackets. So 2 plus is written here. When writing charges on ions, chemists typically write the number first, then the charge. So here it's written as 2 plus rather than plus 2. Now we'll consider the fluorine on the left. Because it gained an electron, it can no longer be considered an atom. We see it has 9 protons, which supply a charge of positive 9. Remember that it gained the blue electron from the magnesium atom so if you count all the electrons, you'll see that there are 10. 10 electrons supply a charge of negative 10. So the net charge is positive 9 and negative 10, which is equal to negative 1. As we said, because it gained an electron and it now has a net charge, it can't be called an atom anymore. Instead, it's called an ion. When nonmetals form negative ions, the INE ending is removed and replaced by the ending IDE. So now it's called a fluoride ion. Since it is an ion, we put it in square brackets and write the net charge on the top right, like this. For a negative one charge, chemists usually just write the negative sign and leave out the number one. We can do the same thing to the fluorine atom on the right which had gained magnesium's other valence electron. Displaying it as a fluoride ion with a square bracket and a negative charge. We'll bring back the magnesium ion. Now we have the finished Bohr diagram, which shows the ionic compound magnesium fluoride. Notice that the magnesium ion and both fluoride ions have the same electron arrangement as the neutral atom of the noble gas neon each with two electrons in the first shell and eight electrons, or a stable octet, in the second shell. Note that the colors we add to electrons here are just to help us keep track. 
Color has no meaning when we are talking about actual electrons. We'll do one more example. We're asked to draw a Bohr diagram for the compound calcium oxide. We'll start with a neutral atom of calcium, showing its valence shell as yellow and its two valence electrons as the two small light blue circles. Now we'll add a neutral oxygen atom, showing its valence shell as a light orange circle and its six valence electrons in pink. Notice that two of oxygen's valence electrons are unpaired. In order for oxygen to get a stable octet, it would need to gain two electrons to pair up with the two unpaired electrons. Now look at calcium. It has two unpaired valence electrons. In order for calcium to end up with the stable electron arrangement of argon, it needs to lose its two valence electrons. So what happens is calcium's two valence electrons are transferred to the oxygen atom. Giving us these two new ions. A calcium 2 plus ion with 20 protons and 18 electrons. And an O2 minus or oxide ion with 8 protons and 10 electrons. Notice that the calcium 2 plus ion has the same electron arrangement as a neutral atom of the noble gas argon. And the oxide ion has the same electron arrangement as a neutral atom of the noble gas neon. Also notice that both ions also have a stable octet in what is now their valence shells. So now we have finished the Bohr diagram or Bohr model for the ionic compound calcium oxide. Thank you.